Test, test. There we go. Awesome. Woo! Welcome to the Chart Boost Dev House. Oh, yeah. Thank you. I'm, I'm not important here. I'm just introducing these guys. Um, thank you for coming to the Chart Boost Dev House this afternoon. Uh, this is going to be a great session. Uh, definitely excited for Adam and Jason to share their knowledge. They have so much experience. Um, just within the chart boost dashboard and working with developers and helping developers work through any issues that they may run into, optimize. Um, so handing the floor over, of course, to Jason and Adam, please give them a warm welcome. Is this the clicker? Hello, thank you. Awesome. Uh, thanks for coming today, guys. I'm Adam. Uh, I've been with Chartboost about three and a half years now. Uh, started with the customer support team, currently focusing on customer success. Uh, what that means to you is uh, I've helped a ton of customers, uh, did a lot of troubleshooting, very familiar with the Chartboost product. Um, so I'm going to share some of that knowledge with you guys here today. Hello. <laughs> I'm Jason. Uh, I've been at Chartboost about three years now. Uh, one of the reasons why I chose to work at Chartboost was our slogan, which some of you may be familiar with, is we heart developers. Working with customers uh, on a very close basis is something I'm very uh, passionate about. Uh, next slide. Uh, I want to share a quick story. Uh, you know, me and Adam working with customer success, we're looking at a lot of data and we noticed that some of our customers weren't, you know, who were only using our regular interstitial product and weren't taking advantage of our video product. We wanted to reach out to them and inform them about our product, let them know some of the things that we could do for them regarding optimization and the things that we're going to go into today. And one of these guys, his name is Wolfgang. Um, I like his name, so that's why I said it. He's pretty cool. Uh, I reached out to him, I informed him, I let him know, hey, take advantage of our video. Did a little bit of optimization of his campaigns, and whoops. As you can see, uh, we were able to double, double his revenue in less than a month. Uh, and that's just a little of the advantage of, uh, the advantages of uh, having a customer success team, um, and one of the reasons why I really like working with this company. So today we're going to get into a, a, a few things. We're going to talk a little bit about your goals. We're going to debunk some myths, some things you may have heard or some practices you may be doing that may not be the best. Um, and then we're going to go into how to structure your campaigns and finally how ad relevance or ad relevance technology sort of works in your favor. So there's a lot of things there. Cool. So. We know that you want to boost your ECPM. We know that you know with an increased understanding of analytics, you can make more you know data-driven decisions. Um, and the trick here is really balancing your user experience versus increasing revenue. So what that means is, say you have a game and you can show a bunch of ads like every time on boot up, every level select. And while you may make a, a lot of revenue doing this, it may not be the best user experience. On the flip side, you could have a game, not show an ad every single time on boot up, or not show an ad ever, maybe only show an ad five times, and you can see there where that, that may be a better experience for your user, but is that really helping you, you know, optimize and drive value and revenue for your game? So for those who don't have video, why you should have it. Obviously, higher ECPMs. Video is a, a more immersive experience. Uh, a video playing and sound and music and colors is better than a sort of static interstitial. And as you can see, uh, the example of Wolfgang earlier, we were able to double his revenue by just adding a video interstitial product. Um, and generally, you know, video is becoming an industry standard. So uh, I mentioned our interstitial video product and rewarded video. And our interstitial video product is best suited for you know, games with you know, levels and uh, sort of a store or journey-based game. And a rewarded video are better for games that are using in-app purchases or you have some sort of in-game content you would like to deliver to your customer. 
Uh, and with that, uh, pass it to Adam to kind of go over some of the myths that you know we have faced when you know dealing with support with our customers. Alrighty. So um, as I mentioned, I uh, started out in customer support, uh, which means we get a lot of tickets, a lot of inquiries. Uh, we've noticed that we've come across a whole lot of myths as well. So there's a few that we'd like to kind of debunk. Uh, the first one is that rewarded video, uh, rewarded videos are incentivized. Uh, this is a myth because the user is not being incentivized to click or install um, an ad. The user has the option to view a video for a reward in app. Uh, therefore, rewarded video, the rewarded videos are incentivized. Myth has been busted. Uh, myth number two is um, that additional coding is required in order to use video interstitial. Um, this is a myth because all you need to do is go to the dashboard, create a new video publishing campaign, Hit save, and within 30 minutes, you'll start serving interstitials to your customers, as long as you're using SDK 6.0 or newer. Um, so we can consider that myth busted as well. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and talk about campaign structures. We're going to start with some very basics, and then we're going to take a bit of a deeper dive into all the options that we have uh, for our publishers. Um, so we'll start with the very basics. Um, and this is just getting a campaign going. Um, what you're going to want to do is create a campaign, select the ad type. Now, this is where you decide whether you want to show a video interstitial or a rewarded video interstitial. And you select this in the, uh, you can't really see it here, but it's the ad type, which is the second drop dropdown. Um, next, you choose the platform your game is on. And after that, you select the game you'd like to publish, hit save, and in a short amount of time, you'll begin serving those videos in your game. Uh, second part of the campaign settings is the named location. This is a really cool part of the campaign settings because we give you um, the option to choose exactly when and where in your game you want interstitials to be served. Um, and um, along with this, we also give this gives you very granular. Uh, this gives you access to very granular data. Um, once you've added named locations into your game, you can pull up your app analytics, and you can group by these specific ad locations. And this is where you can see exactly um, how these each individual locations are performing. You can see where clicks are being delivered, where installs are being delivered. And based off of the data that you have, you can make informed decisions whether or not to continue to publish in certain locations or maybe try a new location in your app. Um, another part of the campaign settings is the filtering section. Um, the best use case for this section is to block your competitors or block apps of games that are not in a genre that fits with your type of game. For example, if you have a war game and you don't want to show a uh, Bugs Bunny you know, child's game, you can block that in this area of the, the campaign settings. Uh, however, I don't recommend just going crazy and selecting every app uh, because we have tools on the back end that are um, optimizing these campaigns for you, which I'm going to talk about in a, in a second here. So just to kind of recap this section, if you don't want your competitors to be shown in your game, use this. Other than that, I'd probably stay away. Um, and the last section of the campaign overview page that I want to go over is the audience targeting. Um, we give you a ton of options to select. You can choose to target um, certain app genres, cer uh, certain uh, genders, uh, certain devices, and a whole lot more. But what I recommend is um, when you're looking at this section of your campaigns, um, start with one. Let it run for a few weeks. Look at your data. Analyze the data and make your decisions based off of the data you've collected. If you found something's working well, maybe add another. Um, Another filter. Um, don't I don't recommend adding a ton of of filters all at once because then it makes it harder to look at the data and really analyze what is working and what's not. So feel free to use this stuff, but don't get too crazy when you're in your campaign settings unless you have the data um, to back up your decisions. So um, 
I mentioned that you don't need to go crazy with some of this stuff, and that's because we have uh, ad relevance technology that's optimizing your campaigns on a regular basis. Um, we have a machine learning uh, campaign optimization technology that is always accounting for apps that are performing well, apps that are not performing well, and in turn, we're gonna, over time, as we collect more data on your campaigns, we're gonna serve better ads in your game so that you can reach uh, the highest ECPMs possible. Um, and we also are gonna do our best to show you relevant ads to your users. Um, so ad relevance is doing a ton of the work for you. We give you a lot of the um, options to uh, personalize your campaign settings, but if you just want to create a campaign and let it run, just know that we're doing work on the back end to help you achieve the highest DCPMs possible always. Um, and uh, Jason's going to uh, take over. So, uh, some of the key takeaways obviously, we talked a little bit about video setup, you know, no code needed to you know, start a video campaign. Um, if you're using the latest SDK, which is 6.0 and up, um, the only way this differs is if you want to use our rewarded video product. Uh, and then we talked a little bit about, you know, creating a video interstitial campaign, doing the basic filterings versus advanced filterings. And then we talked, Adam just talked about how we have this machine learning technology that really does all this stuff in the back end. So, you don't really need to get too crazy, but then also as a you know team, you know we're working to see where we can help you make those fine tune ad adjustments for uh, for you. Uh, so with that, thank you so much. I know this was really really brief, uh, but we are available just around walking around. If you have any questions, come up and say hello. Our contact info is up there, and I'll be back down in about five minutes with some business cards. Uh, thank you so much.